Historical museums are filled with artifacts that have changed history, such as the Declaration of Independence, pieces of the Parthenon, and remnants of Viking vessels like Sutton Hoo. However, even mundane things can carry a strange history. Until the 20th century, a museum in Modena, Italy boasted a bucket said to have caused the War of the Bucket, making it history's most famous pail. Wars have been fought in defense of many noble values, like freedom and liberty, and political issues like national boundaries and royal successions across the globe. However, some wars are fought over much less noble things, and one of the strangest is the War of the Bucket. Named for the bucket that played a critical role in one of the most significant battles in the medieval era, this war appears to have been fought over a trifle. Even in the Middle Ages, buckets were common enough that they weren't worth a whole war. Yet this fight caused the death of around 2,000 people. So it's time to dive into this unusual conflict. It did not immediately impact Northern Italian politics or leave any lasting changes on warfare in the Middle Ages, but it reminds us of the complexities and trivialities that can push people into violence at the drop of a bucket. Was this war actually fought over a stolen bucket? The legend states the war began when some Modenese soldiers snuck into the center of Bologna and found a bucket at a well. Some versions of the myth note the container held riches and other plunder. In contrast, different versions say it was empty. Logically, the Modenese soldiers stole it and then displayed the bucket in their hometown in mockery of Bologna, or possibly to take the riches for themselves. In outrage, the Bolognese demanded the bucket be returned. When the Modenese refused, Bologna mustered up an army and marched out against Modena to recover their honor and their bucket. While the story is entertaining, historians believe it is not accurate. With the extreme tension surrounding these two cities for several hundred years in the Middle Ages, it is highly unlikely Modenese soldiers could have snuck into Bologna, made it to the city center, and stolen a bucket from the well without being caught. Also, although a bucket was stolen during the war, historians believe it happened after Modena won, based on a 17th century poem describing the conflict. The container was a trophy, not an instigator of the war. Stealing a water pail as a war trophy may seem unusual, but for the Modenese, it was a way of showing their superiority. The artisans of Modena were highly skilled in making wells. These constructions used physics to bring out the water like a fountain, so people did not need buckets. The artisans in Bologna had not learned how to do this, so stealing their bucket was a way for the Modenese to remind their rivals of their own cleverness. Traditionally, the bucket was displayed in the Modenese Cathedral for years. It was later transferred to the City Hall, and a replica took its place in the cathedral. However, despite the legendary fame surrounding a centuries-old water pail, the conflict was about much more than tensions between Modena and Bologna. Some historians state that dissonance even extends beyond northern Italy, encompassing the Holy Roman Empire and the Catholic Church. Although it may seem strange to us today, Italy is a younger, unified country than the United States. Italy has been a critical part of Western history for hundreds of years, but it was divided into states and factions for most of that time. These city-states were vital for the medieval era and the Renaissance, but they also contributed to near-continuous battles in northern Italy at the start of the 14th century. Much of the tension arose from the struggle for power between the Pope and the Holy Roman Empire. The Catholic Church took an active part in European politics during the Middle Ages, even participating in wars and supporting claimants to various thrones across Europe. The city-states who supported the Pope were called the Guelphs, and those who supported the Holy Roman Empire were called the Ghibellines. As bordering city-states with a natural rivalry, Bologna and Modena were caught up in this conflict. Bologna sided with the Pope and the Guelphs, Modena partnered with the Holy Roman Empire and the Ghibellines. These alliances only increased the tensions between these two city-states, which mounted throughout the late 13th and early 14th centuries as both Italian powers took cities and territory from each other, with backing from the Pope or the Holy Roman Emperor. The feud continued to grow, with Modena and Bologna consistently attacking each other, until 1325, when the War of the Bucket finally began. The war started commonly enough. Some Bolognese troops crossed into Modenese lands to attack border towns and fields. 
Attacks and raids were a standard part of their animosity, so the Motanese soon retaliated, pushing back into Bolognese lands and laying siege to Montevallo. It was one of the fortresses charged with protecting Bologna from direct sieges. The Montanese leader, Passerino, was determined to attack the fortress anyway, not knowing the leader of Montevallo had recently entered the overarching rivalry between the Catholic Church and the Holy Roman Empire. Despite Bologna supporting the Church, Montevallo's ruler switched allegiance to the Holy Roman Empire, aligning himself with Modena. With this unexpected victory, Passerino did not immediately move deeper into Bolognese territory because he didn't have a big enough army and was not technically at war yet. However, he already had his sights on the last Bolognese fortress, eventually pushing the conflict into a war with one of the biggest battles in the Middle Ages. Thus, the reasons behind the War of the Bucket are much more complicated than one side taking a bucket and not returning it. Northern Italian politics have become part of the power struggle between the Holy Roman Emperor and the Pope, exacerbating the tension between Modena and Bologna as natural adversaries. Bologna had also just lost Montevallo to Modena, leaving them more vulnerable to military attacks. They knew they could gather more soldiers than Modena in 1325, so Bologna declared war. What happened during the War of the Bucket? The War of the Bucket was short as it was fought and won in only one battle. The Battle of Zappolino occurred in 1325. Zappolino was a fortification in Bolognese territory charged with protecting the city of Bologna. It was well fortified against sieges and was supposed to work alongside Multivalia to protect Bologna. The people who lived there were to attack anyone who laid siege to Bologna, launching attacks from the enemy's rear and deterring any severe blockades. But Multivalia had already fallen to Modena, leaving Bologna more vulnerable. Bologna declared war, gathering between 20 and 30,000 infantry soldiers and another 2,000 to 2,500 cavalry riders. Modena was in dire straits and called on the Holy Roman Empire for help. While they were eventually able to match Bologna's cavalry, they only had 5 to 8,000 infantry soldiers. While the numbers may make the war seem frighteningly disproportionate, the two city-states had considerable differences in their armies. The Motanese soldiers were primarily well-trained nobles. The Bolognese soldiers were poorly equipped and had been forced into the military, leaving them uninvested and untrained. The Bolognese, supported by other Guelph allies and Pope John XXII himself, started by laying siege to Montevallo and trying to prevent the Motanese army from crossing the Panero River. Despite their attempts to thwart the crossing, the Modenese army surprised the Bolognese military on November 15th, successfully crossing the river and breaking through the defensive line. The Modenese army regrouped after their victory and decided to attack the remaining fortress around Bologna, Zappolino. Modena's early success threw Bologna into a panic. They couldn't lose both Montevallo and Zappolino. The Bolognese and Guelph's army lifted the siege on Montevallo and sent the whole army to defend Zappolino. The two armies met in the valley outside the Zappolino fortress, but it was late afternoon by the time everyone arrived. Most medieval generals would have set up camp and waited to start the battle in the morning due to limited remaining daylight and exhaustion among the troops. The Modenese leaders were more concerned about how to beat a much larger army. They knew they had to gain an early victory, which meant taking the Bolognese by surprise. So, despite breaking traditions, Modena started the battle between 3.30 and 4 p.m. on November 15th, leaving only two hours of daylight. The Bolognese scrambled to prepare, but they weren't yet organized and still had soldiers coming in. Then, the Modenese army charged at the Bolognese, and the Battle of Zappolino began. Despite having vastly superior numbers, the Bolognese and Guelph's army was quickly routed. Their large numbers were a hindrance in the valley because they did not have the room to properly maneuver 30,000 soldiers. In the early chaos of the battle, they did not see a portion of the Modenese cavalry break away from the action and climb a nearby hill. They also did not see that part of the Modenese cavalry until they appeared behind the Bolognese army and launched a rear attack. The Bolognese military thought they were surrounded, and many soldiers began retreating from the battle, spreading panic with little way to escape. After only two hours of fighting, many Bolognese foot soldiers were forced into Zappolino, Bologna's fortress, although about 2,000 did not make it. The cavalry fled, 
and the Motanese and Ghibellines army gave chase, pushing their enemies all the way to the gates of Bologna. After destroying several other Bolognese fortifications, the Motanese army camped in front of Bologna for three days, forcing them to watch their celebration party. When they finally left, some soldiers took a bucket from a well outside the city, accidentally starting the legend that the whole war had been about a stolen bucket. At least 2,000 people died during the Battle of Zappolino, but this substantial medieval battle was not enough to stop the rivalry between the Ghibellines and the Guelphs. It didn't even resolve tensions between Bologna and Modena. The two city-states signed a peace treaty in 1326, saying Bologna would pay war reparations if Modena returned all Bolognese territory conquered during the war. Aside from some money changing hands, the War of the Bucket did not cause immediate changes to northern Italian politics. However, it temporarily set the Guelphs and the Catholic Church back in their ongoing conflict with the Ghibellines and the Holy Roman Empire. The two powers continued squabbling until 1538, when King Charles I of Spain, also known as Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, took control of northern Italy after the Italian Wars. The foreign invasion forced the two groups to resolve their differences, which have remained ever since. The War of the Bucket may seem small compared to modern wars like World War II, but it still impacted world history. The legends surrounding the war make the bucket more significant than it probably was, but the whole conflict reminds us of the damage long-standing feuds can deal to a nation. Power struggles between international powers, like the Catholic Church and the Holy Roman Empire, can trickle down to more minor leaders, allowing tension and conflict to grow until terrible battles can be fought for power and named for simple things like buckets. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about Italian history, check out our book, History of Italy, a captivating guide to Italian history starting from the first settlements through the Middle Ages to the modern period. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.